Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I will show you 10 ways to make your affinity photo life a lot easier. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Now the first way to make your life easier is to know the right people and because of that I want to of course invite you to my Facebook group with over 3700 active members. They are lovely, helpful and inspirational. Also I do challenges in that group but of course you can also join any other group. Here comes the next advice and this is really important to getting the right help quickly and this is how to take a screenshot and then edit it in Affinity Photo. Now on Windows it's very simple you only have to press the print button on your keyboard. If you don't have a print button or you're on another device simply go to Google and enter for example how to do a screenshot on Mac or on iOS or on Android stuff like that so you know how to create the screenshot. This is the first important part. After you've done this go to file and then new from clipboard because in Windows at least the screenshot is saved in the clipboard. If not you can also simply open up the screenshot where it's saved in your system. So let's go to new from clipboard. You can see now we have a screenshot here and what I would advise you to do is go down here where you have your shapes and select the arrow shape. You can open up an arrow just by dragging it out and then you can define the ends of the arrow up here by selecting how that end should look. Usually one is pointy, one is not and then you can simply use the controls to point this to wherever you need the help. For example say okay I need help with this layer here and then describe the problem. You can also go here to the fill color on the left side and give it a nice color that stands out so people easily see the arrow and can help you a lot faster. Don't take photos of your screen, take a screenshot, it's really important. If you're having fun with this video leave a like because this helps my channel so much. Thank you very much for that. Now here's already the next trick on how to get help fast and this is on your keyboard press the F1 button and this will open up the internal help for Affinity Photo. Here you can enter almost anything and you will find help for that. So simply by searching for brush you find a ton of brush related topics. You can of course also be more specific with your search. So let's say the dodge brush tool so you get an explanation what it's doing, what the settings are all doing and then also you get related links that help you more. For example the sponge brush, the burn brush and there's also keyboard shortcuts here for tools. So that's really cool. You see how useful that is simply by pressing F1. Let's go on to some tips that make your life easier in Affinity Photo for handling files and handling the interface. So when you go to File and New, this has two sections on the left side. One says Presets, one says Templates. I want to invite you to create some of your own presets. Here you see the first tab is my presets and then you have a lot of other stuff. Now there's two ways you can do that. You can define your preset as you want it and then click here on plus to create a new one or another way that you can facilitate this is go over here to one of these other tabs and you see there's a lot of choices here. So select those that you use the most. Let's say this one for example. Again click here on the plus sign and this will create a new preset with these specific settings for you and you can then rename this to anything else you want. Let's call this test one and you can see now I have this preset. Of course you want to use a more descriptive name. Now another thing I want to advise you to do is to create templates. For example here I have my master artboard where I have all of the things set up that I use for my thumbnails. Let's open this up real quick and you can see here I have the different sizes. I have all the icons in the right places. I set up all the text and the colors so this makes the work for me super fluent. By the way if you wonder why I have all these art spaces that you usually can't use in Affinity Photo, this is because I created that file in Affinity Designer. I will link the video below to show you how to do that. And then if you want to know how to create a template here, that is actually super simple. The only thing you have to do is to save your file as a normal Affinity Photo file and then 
rename the ending of the file from AF photo into AF template and then point affinity photo down here. You can see add folder, point that to where that file is stored in what kind of folder that file is stored. Super easy. Another thing that often confuses people is where to find things on the screen, on the interface, because sometimes they are hidden, sometimes they are detached, sometimes they are just a little bit strange. So all of this can be answered by going to the view menu. Now, first of all, what you can do here is to go to studio and here you see all of the available windows or tabs over here that you can open. Each of them that has a hook next to it is visible right now. The others are not. So when you, for example, want to see assets, but it's nowhere on your screen, go to view studio assets and make a hook next to that. And you can see now I have assets here, for example, like this. And then if you want to hide that again, you can go in here and undo that, unhook that, and it's gone again, super easy. Now, of course, the view menu has more to offer to you. For example, people often miss the toolbar up here or the tools here on the left side might be detached. So go to view and then here show toolbar. There has to be a hook next that you can see. Now it's gone and now it is visible again. And again, also here for the tools on the side, down here it says dock tools. If this is unhooked, you have these floaty tools, which can be nice sometimes, but you can't easily attach them by just clicking them against the side of the screen. You have to go to view and then to dock tools. Another thing you can do in here that is super helpful is that you can actually create your own studio presets, meaning the visibility of all these tabs and the arrangement of these tabs. So you can, for example, set up your screen configuration differently for, for example, when you edit photos or when you adjust photos or when you do color grading. Now let's talk about things that make it easier to work with Affinity Photo. So here's a trick on when your computer gets a little bit slow or the RAM gets filled by too many layers, too much content in your artwork. Well, there's an easy trick to get around that. First of all, of course, save that file that you have created. After that, go to edit and then copy flatten. This will flatten all of the layers together into one JPEG layer. Let's do this real quick here and then go to file new from clipboard. And so you have a file that looks exactly the same, has the same dimensions and settings, but you only have one layer, one pixel layer, and then you can build on top of that with additional layers, additional adjustments, and you don't have all the CPU power needed for all of these layers. But it's really important you don't save over the file you have created before. Keep that in storage and save this as a new file. That is super important so you have a backup and can still go back to all of these other layers. I also want to show you how to easily choose colors and understand them better. So over here you can choose your colors and the color tab by double clicking on one of these circles and often this is what's opening up and that is a little bit complex to use and well Mm, and not so much fun. You also have these other choices. They're even more complex. What I most often use is the HSL color wheel. There's two reasons for that. First of all, you have a big wheel where you have a huge distance that you can move your mouse along. And this makes it finer and easier to adjust these colors. Then you have that triangle in the middle where you have a second point that you can just move around to adjust the brightness and the tint and the saturation all in one go with one of these dots. And then when you have found a setting, you can even still adjust the color and this setting here will stay the same. On top of that, you also have a hex file down here so you can select that color and copy it over, for example, into another application or using it for the internet because this is how HTML is understanding colors. The next trick is about placing files, especially if you place a lot of files. And that is that you can simply drag them into your files. We can see here, I have an image, click and drag, and now I have it over here as a new image layer, as you can see here. So that is very good. It retains the original size and you can resize this, of course, 
as we know from image layers in Affinity Photo. And you can also do this for multiple files. So if you have like 10 files you want to enter here, just go to the folder and drag them over into your open canvas. Now the next tip is related to that and this is in your OS, in your system, facilitate the quick access menu. You have something similar on Windows. It works a little bit differently. And there you can simply pin the folder of the project you are working on. It's super easy to do that. It goes like this on Windows. So you select one of the folders, let's say this one, and simply drag it over here until you see that black line, then let go of it. And you can see now this is pinned over here. Every time I go to my folder menu, I can simply click here on the shortcut and I'm directly in the folder where I need to go. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a like that helps me a lot and also comment if you have additional tips or tricks. See you in my next tutorial. Bye. Thank you.